Now, it's estimated that one in 10 people who are infected with COVID-19 develop long COVID. And following the surge of the Omicron variant, the fear is many more will start to suffer with lingering symptoms. But just how are people affected and what help is there for them? Well, Claire Brock has been finding out. First, she sat down with businesswoman and broadcaster Nora Casey, who is managing new and worrying health challenges since contracting COVID-19 in January. I had COVID in early January and to be honest I had a really mild COVID. I think I was often bragging at the time saying it was just like a cold. I worked through it mostly. I think there was only one day I took to my bed. But I noticed afterwards that I was a bit breathless and I had a lot of headaches. Um, but about five weeks later I went to my GP who I hadn't seen for two years. I'm normally very healthy and she said what's wrong with you and I said I just can't describe it any better. I sick all the time, I've like jelly legs, I feel dizzy, I have terrible, terrible headaches, I'm breathless, very nauseous. And she said, okay, okay, let's have a look. And she took my blood pressure and it was 200 over 120, which is critical hypertensive, it's called. So she was immediately concerned and said, you're at risk of a stroke and stay where you are. Let's get the windows open, see if we can get that down. Nora's post-COVID symptoms led to hospitalisation weeks later. Over the course of two weeks, they did MRIs on her brain and a battery of tests to look at the lingering symptoms. Things we worry about, the heart, the lungs, the brain, were they all impacted? Um, my breathlessness was frightening. Um, but my heart was probably the worst, you know. It was like somebody playing ping pong with my, with my body. Like it kept sending my heart rate shooting through the roof. It still does, you know. Inexplicably, my heart will just start pumping really fast. But it was sudden onset diabetes, now officially diagnosed as type 1 diabetes, which has affected Nora most. So it doesn't really respond to any diet, you know. In fact, I fasted maybe for the first week and still my blood sugars were through the roof. And since then, I'm now on um, three or four different drugs um, and my, my blood sugars have now started to fall all the time, which is even more worrying, I can tell you, because I start to shake a lot. I'm shaky today because my bloods are low. Um, and I get really uh, bad, you know, sweats, I feel dizzy, I think I'm going to faint any minute. Nora's taking 15 different drugs to treat the symptoms of long COVID and she must test herself seven times a day to manage her diabetes. I'd say my son Dara is the one that worries the most because when you lose one parent and you've only got one left, you know, everything gets magnified and... And at times, you know, I'm quite a different person. I think I said I'm shaky and it's not nice to see people who are, I feel a little, my confidence is dented. I just don't feel quite right in myself. Uh, so he worries a great deal. You've got the support that you need, but do you think in the country that we are managing people with long COVID, that people who are suffering are getting the supports and the help that they need? But at the moment, I'm thousands into medical fees and I don't know how anybody can access that kind of expertise and specialist help while they're going through COVID if they don't have sufficient funds. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just an anathema that we did so much and paid out so much for COVID, but we're completely ignoring all of the people who have long COVID. Um, I, I certainly, through my own endeavours, found the right people that I wanted to be looked after by, but that's a very big privilege that I have over and above other people. So how has life uh, changed for you, would you say, Nora, uh, pre-COVID to the life you're living now? Well, I was walking every day, so I'm down to about two walks a week, and I try to do them quite gently, because if I try to walk fast, well, not only do I get breathless, but I also use up energy and my blood's full. Nora's still suffering with headaches. She'll also need surgery to remove lymph nodes at the back of her neck. My body is still fighting it. It still thinks it's got to fight it. So um, it's on high alert all the time. Dr. Jack Lambert, Professor of Medicine and Infectious Disease at the UCD School of Medicine, runs a long COVID clinic. We originally thought, you know, with, with the original virus Delta wave, people ended up in the hospital ICU. We thought there'd be a lot of lung damage and cardiac damage, but lungs have 100% heals, healed, uh, hearts have 100% healed. The thing that hasn't healed is the brain. And then this new variant that's come along, the Omicron, is, is causing less heart, less pulmonary, but it's causing a lot of intestinal and a lot of brain inflammation. So patients aren't end up sick in the hospital, but they are ending up with long COVID 
and the symptoms that you know they're presenting with, you know, three, six, twelve months down the way, after even a minor infection with 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 COVID, you know, it's kind of brain fog, concentration problems, head pressures, sleep disturbances, mood disorders, kind of random pains, tachycardias, the, the whole kind of fight or flight kind of response. And you're finding that it's not differentiating between age necessarily or gender in this regard? Absolutely not. I mean, some studies say that it seems to be more prevalent in uh, women, and, and, uh, but in terms of age, we're seeing a whole spectrum of ages. The first wave, I saw older people and healthcare workers. In the most recent wave in the long COVID clinic, we've been seeing a lot of younger people in their 20s, 30s, 40s presenting with long COVID. Uh, you know, otherwise, you know, very functional professional people, working, great moms, great everything, totally debilitated, you know, on wheelators, you know, unable to even walk, let alone function in a job and take care of their children. So, so yes, we're seeing a different range of disease now. When it comes to long COVID care and treatment, he believes the state has got the model wrong and needs to redirect its services. Does the state have a plan for dealing with long COVID? And in your opinion, is it adequate? Well, they have an interim plan put together to have pulmonary specialists managing the short-term complications of, of, of long COVID, which don't exist anymore. So I think we really need to rethink, putting, rather than putting money into uh, you know, rehab for conditions that don't exist anymore. We, we need to keep up with COVID-19. It's a rapidly changing area and we don't have good services put in place uh, for management of these patients. What's your message to the Minister for Health? I think the message is, is we don't have a linked up service. You know, what happens is when patients get these conditions is they, they go see a pulmonary specialist, they go see a heart specialist, they go see a neurologist, they go see a pain specialist, they go see a gastroenterologist. We need to have a multidisciplinary team that comes together to provide services. We need psychiatric psychology support. We need physiotherapy support. We, we need to kind of have a multidisciplinary team who comes together to support these patients because viruses don't affect just one organ system, they affect many different organ systems. So we need to really linked up care and multidisciplinary support. And it should be, and there should be centres of excellence around Ireland led by people with, with the appropriate expertise.